be learning in this session. So any questions on what we have learned this today in extractions? We were looking at extractions where we saw a flat file to flat file, flat file. Yeah, we saw flat file to flat file, flat file to database, database to database, database to flat file. And uh, we will today we will see how do we extract the data from SAP ECC and load it into a database table and parallelly write it into a flat file and we will create a structured flat file. All right, so we'll look into all these activities today, but before uh, you know we go ahead, if you have any questions on what we have gone through so far, please go ahead and ask your questions. All right, Chandra asked for two minutes, so once he's back, we'll get started. So on a quick note on the topics that we'll be looking at today, we'll be looking at extracting from SAP ECC to database. And within the same job, we will see extracting data from SAP ECC to a flat file. <coughs> So there are a couple of scenarios uh, that I recently dealt with. You know, you will be extracting the data from SAP because uh, one of our customer has a distributed data set. They have data in SAP. They have data in flat files. They have data in XML. And they have the data in database tables as well. So they want to integrate the entire data, entire data that they have in business into an Oracle system because uh, Predominantly, their current system is running on Oracle, so they wanted to move to Oracle. So that is where we did an SAP to uh, database extraction. So this can be a possible interview question that you might get, like why I need to extract? Because generally, people will be in a sense in that uh, <clears throat> you know SAP to database extraction is something that generally will not happen. But uh, you know that is something that happens quite frequently All right so that you can answer that question if you get that in interview you can say that yeah I extracted data from SAP data uh, to a database and uh, this is the scenario where your customer has multiple databases or you know SAP and non SAP systems as source and they want to migrate everything to a target system Right, and one more good example for this is uh, in one of my recent projects, the target system is SAP HANA, which is a database. Right, so you can extract from data from ECC and load it into a database, which is SAP HANA. So we can go with all these scenarios. Uh, Chandra, are you back so that I can proceed? All right, the second scenario is. Uh, you have a program called LSMW on SAP where we extract the data from the flat files from the SAP tables and uh, you know we will load that into or you know this is legacy system migration workbench LSMW that stands for and uh, <coughs> using LSMW you extract the data from the flat files and you load it into uh, target SAP tables. If you are planning to update one or two tables, you can go ahead and use LSMW. But if you are planning to update a mass <coughs> update on the table, let us say you are planning to update the entire material master, you are planning to update the entire customer master and vendor master, then in those cases you have to go with the IDOC loading mechanism. So uh, generally what we do is uh, with BODS, we will generate a flat file as an output. And this flat file that is generated by BODS will be read by LSMW. So in this case, we have to create a structured flat file defined by LSMW consultants or the appers. They generally give us uh, a specified structure Right, they, they especially generally give us a specified structure saying that this is how we need the file to be generated and we have to generate a structured flat file using BODS. Till now, the ones that we generated are unstructured flat files. Right, if you go and look at 
your target files that we generated so far, they are unstructured, right? Whatever the data that is coming in from the source, they dynamically get generated with that structure. But if you want to create a specified structure saying that this uh, customer ID is of 10 character length, material number is of 18 character length, then you can create a structured flat file using uh, data services. All right, so let's continue with today's topic that uh, we'll be extracting the data from SAP to data services and then finally load that into a target uh, database or a flat file. So in this scenario, our source is SAP CC. You also call the latest system as EHP 6 or EHP 7 and uh, the old systems are called as R3 system, right? So this is built on a three-tier architecture, so that's the reason why this is called as an R3 system. So before we start the extraction, let us have a look at how does this SAP system look. So on an SAP system, it's divided into two layers majorly. One is your application layer, and the second one is your database layer. Right, so your database holds your data and your application, front-end applications defines how your data should be loaded into your back-end database tables. So generally we use the, or we interact with the front-end screen using something called as T codes or transaction codes. So if you go to the SAP system, I'll just log off from this one, just in case if somebody is new to SAP. So. Right. So the navigation to log into SAP is start all programs and here you will see something called as SAP front end and if you go to that you will see SAP log on pad. So once it is or you can also find it on your desktop if it is configured, this is my SAP log on pad and once you double click on that one, it will open this page and here you can see the connections and in real time projects you will have something called development connections, test connections, production connections and all this stuff. Right, so your replication servers and all the servers or replica servers or instances, everything will be displayed here. So what you generally do is you go and select your ECC system, double click on that one and it will take you to the front end screen. So this is your logon screen where you need to pass your username, password, and then press enter, then it will take you to <clears throat> the front screen. So the key parameters that we generally pass or keep in mind when we are logging into SAP is one is your client number. So generally on an IDA servers, which is like a practice service, you'll have 100, 800, or 600, but in client systems, you'll have it as 100, 200, 250, 300, something like that. Right, give the username and password and this is where you, this is what you call as a transaction code box on the SAP system. So this is where you key in your transactions to navigate through the front end application. So this is what I am trying to explain. The front end screen or front end application you navigate through the front-end application using transaction codes and through these application you'll be able to see your back-end database tables, right? So, uh, you know, let us say if I'm trying to deal with some 10,000 records I can directly extract through the application because once you establish a connection to the data services system using SAP Data Store, it connects through application to your BODS. Right, it's not from the database to your PODS, but it's from the SAP application to your PODS. So if you are extracting somewhere around 10,000 records or uh, 
you know, as per the SAP standards, it is 10,000 records. But if you have some 30,000 records or 40,000 records, and if you have good RAM on your system, then uh, you know you can do a direct download. There are different download mechanisms uh, which we'll be looking forward. Uh, so one is your SAP application to be odious. Let us look at the first one. So for that, we need some credentials. Let us say, when I'm trying to connect to the database server, I picked up the server name, username, password, database name. So similarly, I need some parameters that I need to pass on when I'm trying to create my SAP data store. So you can get all those information along with your username and password. Uh, you know, you, you select the server to which you are trying to connect as your source on the logon pad right click and go to properties and this is where you get the application server number and instance name right instance number and a server name right sometimes it can be ecc1 or some in some other systems it can be some client name dot com or server name dot client name dot com or it can be an ip address to like 128 7.8 or something like that so you need to copy this application server number and then the instance name uh, instance number username and password and remember we logged in using the client number which is 800 so these are the credentials that you need to pass on in when you are creating your SAP data store so SAP is an external system to which I need to connect through a data store so you know all the possible ways in which we can go and create the data stores right so go to your local object library uh, Go to your data store tab, right click, go for new, and you call this as DSSAP, right? So, as, unless and until you are using your source, uh, SAP as a source and SAP as a target, you don't mention that as SAP underscore SRC or underscore TRGT, right? You, it is understood that it is uh, one SAP system that you are connecting to and that will be your source. And just in case if you are using that, uh, SAP one SAP system as your source and another SAP system as your target then please mention your source and target systems right these are the naming standards of SAP uh, so that's the reason why I'm uh, specifying on those things now the data store type is SAP application till now we create a database now we are going to create an SAP application because we are trying to connect to the SAP system so connect to the SAP application and then the server name is right we got this from the logon pad which is ECC1 and then the username then password then click on the advanced button and you will see something called as configurations we'll talk about that in the next session right but here you need to pass on some information like your client number is 800 system number is 78 which is nothing but your instance number on your logon pad right system number is instance number and you can select this to execute in the background or foreground you generally keep it as background and then uh, remember uh, we have some certification questions and interview questions when we are talking about the SAP data stores because very few people get exposed to uh, this activity and uh, you know if you mention about this in our resumes definitely we will get a question on this one right so now if you look at this these are the fundamentals we gave the so you might get a question uh, in an interview saying that when have you ever created an SAP data store and if yes what are the configurations that you pass so you will say the server name or application server name to be more precise and then the client name username uh, client number username and password then the system number or instance number and after that then this is something that is very important data transfer methods right so there are multiple methods so that RFC is something that is added from 4.0 version prior to this version there is no RFC so we have direct download shared directory and FTP right along with the custom transfer so we'll go one by one so direct download what is direct download 
So we just saw that this table can have 10,000 records and since there are 10,000 is less volume, you can directly, you know, pull it through the application. So what will happen when your data services sends a request to the application? Right, let me just delete this and put it in the right direction. Right, your data services request the SAP application because you are connecting to the application, not the direct directly to the database. This application sends the request to the database. This database responds back to the application and this application sends the data to your data services system. Right? So this is a direct download mechanism. Right? So this is direct download. This next so with this what happens when you are trying to you know uh, push huge volume of data, let us say it is 100,000, right? So if you're trying to push 100,000 records from your database to application, so obviously your application is installed on a system which has some RAM, so that, that, keep, that ensures the fast of your, uh, fastness of your application. So obviously your data will go and sit in your RAM and system will slow down. So you need to make sure that you go for an alternate approach when you are especially dealing with huge volume of data. So that is when you get the concept of right shared directory. So how does the shared directory work? So data services sends a request to the application. Application sends a request to the database. Database now understands that this is huge volume and you have selected a shared directory mechanism. Instead of sending the data to your application, back to your application, it will send it to your shared directory. So we can call it just as a directory, but the reason why we are saying it as a shared directory because your SAP system should have a write and read access on this one. Along with that, your BODS server should also have a read and write access to this one. So that is where we will go and write this data into. This data is exposed into this one in the form of a flat file. Uh, generally, it will be an ABAP file or a .dat file, the way we select it. And now, your data services reads the data from this one. Right? This will improve the performance because you sent a request from your data services to the application. Application sent it back to the database. The database exposed that data in the form of a flat file. And this flat file is read uh, as a direct flat file source to your BODS system. So reading the data from a database table or an SAP system is pretty fast. Uh, I mean, reading a flat file is pretty fast compared to reading the data from a database table or SAP system. Right? So this is the shared directory mechanism that happens in the back end. Right? And after that, uh, you know, people work on SAP. They pretty much know that remote function calls. So how does this remote function calls work? So if you are looking at an SAP uh, ACC system and an SAP BW system, right, both are SAP systems and they communicate with each other using remote function calls. Or you go and look at an SAP ECC system and a CRM system, they communicate between them using RFCs, remote function calls. Since SAP acquired this uh, data services, so it added that flavor of remote function calls and uh, that is one of the fastest way of mechanism, it, it happens through RFCs and after that you have something called as FTP, right, file transfer protocol which is, uh, you know, it can be an SFTP, secure file transfer protocol. Okay. Yeah, you told me that RFC can I, we have or uh, one of the transfer method are RFC, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if there if the if there is any situation like a uh, SAP ECC BW or SAP ECC CRM, in the situation RFC will come. So, but in this situation SAP BODS is different, right? Is there a, the is there any connection between RFC? Can we establish RFC connection between ECC? And the BODS? Yeah, if you go to the latest version of your ECC system or let me connect to a BW system and show it to you. Let me check if I have an access to this one first. Thank you. 
Right, so if you look at the data sources, not info sources, sorry, or to be more precise on the source systems, it's been long that I connected to the BW system. So now you see something called as BO data services. This is added as an internal component to this SAP system. And From 7.4 onwards? I guess, yes. Okay. Okay. And also on your ECC system, if you go to WE21, I guess. Right. So you can create a TRFC connection between your SAP system. First, you need to go to uh, SALE transaction. Right. Define the logical system. Right. And the basic settings. You go and create the logical system, and once you define the logical system, you go to W21, and uh, you know you call this logical system, and then you create create an RFC, TRFC connections between ECC and your BODA system, and this is a new add-on on the data services side too, because earlier this RFC connections were not there, uh, but this is available from 4.0 version, and this can be an interview question too, so this is. Uh, something that is available from 4.0 uh, version. So now, once we define the SLE connection, we have to go to the Data Services Management Console, and there we have to, uh, you know, configure that same RFC. Whatever we have defined on the ECC side, we have to configure that on the SAP side as well. Then uh, the system will understand. Okay, now we are. Uh, you know, trying to communicate using the same function call. So that is how it happens. I'll show that RFC configuration a little later. But uh, yeah, this is one of the data transfer mechanism. And uh, is that clear, Chandra? Did I answer your question? I got it. Yeah, thanks. And one more thing, I, uh, in case of shared directory, is there any physical, physical folder existing? Yeah, there will be a physical folder. I'll show you where it gets created in a bit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, next one is FTPs, uh, file transfer protocols. So like your shared directory, you'll have it on third-party servers or FTP servers where you can write the data into FTP. But generally, you know, we'll not go for that process because, you know, always connecting to an external system is a risk because you might end up losing the connection or the network might go down and it will be an issue. Uh, so that is not generally recommended or we don't recommend that to our customers and custom transfer. So if you want to write an easy uh, <coughs> programs, ECC programs, transfer routines, and you want to utilize that, you can go ahead and do this custom transfer. But <coughs> sorry, I haven't done this or this before, but yeah, I worked on these three mechanisms and, uh, you know, these three were quite sufficient for different customers that we handle. So let us look at the direct download first. So this is the work directory that gets generated on the SAP system. So this is uh, your answer, Chandra. So we generally pass it like double uh, backward slash, the server name, right? This is the one, and slash, and this is where the folder gets created. And you can uh, define some C colon path. You can use this one. Generally, it saves the bin path workspace. So local directory, you can define this one. And security profile, just make sure that whatever the ID that you are logging in are. So generally, now I'm using my ID. But in projects, you'll not use your ID. You'll have something like uh, service ID or uh, you know, scheduler ID. So you'll be using that ID for this one. So just make sure that you have SAP underscore all profile given to that. It is not just limited to a particular transactions because <coughs> in this case, we are using this SAP data store as a source. But in a future, when we write the data through the IDOPS, we need that to be called as your target data store as well. So when we write to a material master, uh, Module Matt must be zero three IDOC. Uh, so this IDOC needs some transaction code authorizations on the ID. And when I'm trying to create a vendor, right? When I post a vendor, which is I'm creating a vendor using my uh, IDOCs. This this IDOC ID or the ID using which I'm trying to post this IDOC should have a proper authorization 
right? So vendor creation, vendor modification, vendor deletion, extension, all this authorization should be there. And similarly with the customer. So the best way to have it is SAP all as an authentication. And just if in case this one is three, convert this to two, number of connection retries. Uh, because if I give a wrong password and the system will check thrice, that ID will be locked. So uh, just make it one. And rest, everything is will be same. The development class is dollar $TMP on the SAP side. Now once you pass all these credentials, right? So you, I'll just do a quick recall. We gave the uh, client number, then the instance number, then direct download mechanism, the path on the SAP server, the working directory on the SAP server, the local directory path, generate a web directory path, right? And the authentication is SAP all, and number of connection retries as one. And once you pass all these uh, credentials, you just click on apply to see if there is uh, any error. So if in case you pass any of these credentials wrongly, uh, the system will uh, throw out a warning saying that, uh, you know, this is not correct. If you don't get any error as such, right, then you can just click on OK. If there are no errors, it will not show any pop-ups, but if there are any errors or uh, mistakes in the parameters that you pass, it will show up a warning. So this will take a little longer because this is trying to connect to an SAP system which is present in total geograph different geographical location. Right, once you click on uh, this apply and if you don't get any warnings or errors, the next step is you click on OK. And uh, with that, you will be establishing a connection between your data services and SAP system. And once you're, so now we did not get any error or a warning, which means we are good with the credentials, now click on OK. Now once you click on OK, you will see your SAP data store, DSSAP, Creator on your left hand side in your local object library in your data stores tab. The next process will remain the same. You need to go and search uh, for the external data and uh, you need to know which tables you are trying to search. <coughs> let us say material master basic data. Uh, let me go with search. The basic data table is called as Mara for material master. Right, give the table name and just click on search. While it searches, I'll show you how to log on to this one. So you go to the initial screen of SAP. You call it as, uh, once you log into the SAP logon screen, this will be the screen which you will be in, SAP Easy Access screen. So here, enter the transaction code SE11, which is database dictionary. And now it will ask you for the database table name. Give the table name as MARA and click on display. If the table name is correct, it will show you the metadata, the table structure. And this is general material data. And you can click on this button, uh, which is contents. And then press F8 or this is the execute button. And this is your SAP ECC systems uh, material master data. Now we'll be extracting this data into my data services system through the SAP data store. So this is where I'm trying to search through my data store into the SAP system for a table called Mara. So my <coughs> SAP application understands the table name as Mara. So it's searching with the name Mara and it will display all the uh, all the tables that has the word Mara in it. Let us say if, we, if I create some Z table Mara, like BIW Mara V. So it will display all the uh, communication structures, uh, tables, views, and all these things on SAP system which has the word Mara in it. You need to clearly identify which is your table. You can take the help of the description here, general material data. Right click and uh, import it. And once it is imported, you can see that under the tables list down here. SAP. And uh, another important interview question that you can uh, face is, 
can I make my SAP table as a target table in my data flow? Like I make a database table as a target table, can I make a SAP table as a target table? The answer is no, because SAP tables are always your source tables. You cannot write directly into an SAP table using data services. You have to go either through an LSMW process if you are trying to write the data into one or two tables, or if you are trying to update the entire module information, you need to go with your IDOC loading mechanism. But you cannot directly write into an SAP table using data services. So that is the reason why you cannot make your SAP table as your target table. Right, importing an SAP table will uh, take a little longer. So just close this one. And now you go and expand your data store. It is a bit different from your database data store. Database data store has functions tables and template tables. Now, you don't have any template tables on SAP. It is, you know, functions, hierarchy data. If you want to extract the hierarchical information, right, you can go and uh, get that information from these hierarchies. Then IDOCs, MATMAS, BAP 03 DEPMAS, CREMAS, and ODP objects, operational data providers, you can extract or you can extract the tables. So you, for everything, you just need to go through the same search process. If you know the name, go and provide the keyword or the entire name of that object, and you try to import that into your data services, and you utilize that in your job. Now, since we imported the table Mara, you'll see the Mara table here. Now, next step is to go and create a job which will extract the data from ECC and write it into a database table. Job underscore ECC underscore DB underscore FF underscore EXT. I'm trying to do everything in one single data flow. So create a data flow. Pick it from the right-hand side tool palette. Now, Go to your SAP data store, select your Mara table, drag and drop it into your data flow, and by default, it will be your source table. You cannot make it like the way you create your uh, target tables from your source data store, from database. If it is a database table, you drag and drop it, it will ask you whether you have to make it as a source or as a target. But by default, your SAP tables are your source tables. And now, if you click on the SAP table name, you will see the metadata. So in Material Master, probably you'll have 160 columns. All right, so you generally don't need all this information unless until it is required by the business. So we have to do a column level filter. Right, so you don't need all the columns. You just need to pick only those columns that you need. So, uh, you know, the query transformation that you see here on the right-hand side tool palette, you can also see that as an icon for your transformations, and also you'll be finding that under your platform transformation. This transformation is 99% used across the projects. If you go and look at uh, or compare the number of times that this platform transformation is used, uh, compare it with the other transformations, uh, this will be, you know, around 80 to 90 percent uh, more than what the other transformations were used, right? So that is the reason why it is kept in the tool palette. So this transformation, you click on that one and click back on the window and give the name QRY underscore EXT. So whatever the activity that you are trying to do uh, with that query transformation, you give the name because this query transformation can uh, you know, it is really called as a hero of transformations in data services because it will allow you to do n number of activities. So just make sure uh, you give the right name. So let us say if I'm applying some business rules, I can call it as QT underscore. Uh, if it is too long for QRY, you can call it as QT underscore Enrich. If you are trying to apply some business rules, if you are trying to uh, do some group by, you can call it as group by. Just give the proper name because uh, people who are looking at the code, uh, you know, there's no need for you to give a proper or a detailed KT on that one because somebody who knows the data services tool should be in a position to easily understand that. So that is how you generally give the naming conventions. 
spread extract over the query transformation. This query transformation, we'll talk about that uh, in detail, but as of now, it is divided into three areas, schema in, which talks about your source structure or source metadata to be more precise, the column names, the data types, and uh, the descriptions. And on the schema out, this defines your target structure. So you can go ahead and uh, you know select the columns that you need. Uh, so let us say I need first 10 columns. You can select the shift and select them. Or you want selective columns, you can go and uh, you know press control uh, on your keyboard and select with your mouse. And right click and uh, you know add to output. You can do this way, or you want to call a single column unit of measure, select that and drag and drop it to the output. It will be added. Or you want some column, uh, BSTM purchase orders, and this you want it right under your material type. So you can drag and drop it on that one. So now it will ask you whether you are trying to remap this column on the right hand side with that column or you want to insert it above that or below that. So our intention is to insert below. Right, so this is added. So these are the different ways. You can select them and right click and say map to output or you can drag and drop them or you can drag those columns and put them in the order that you want. Right, And this also allows you to do a conversion on the metadata. Double click on the column and call it as material number, which is Matner, right? And uh, the MTART is material type. You double click on that and not only your uh, column names, you can also change their data types and lengths based on your requirement. Right, this is one good feature. We'll talk about more in details about the query transformation. And if you want to apply a filter where you can say LVORM is not equal to X. The values that you generally have for LVORM is either X or null. So I'm just taking not equal to X, which means it is null. So I applied a filter, and now I have a few columns. I applied a column level filter. Right, and this is a row-level filter, a where condition that you applied on the data. Now you go to your target data uh, template table and click on it and call it as stage underscore Mara. And now on the drop-down, you don't see an SAP data store here because this is not, uh, or you are not allowed to go and create a table on the SAP because SAP has its uh, predefined tables and you can uh, import them or use them as a source, or if you want to write it into them, you can use IDOC or LSMW. So select your data store, which is target. Click on this and connect with this one. Now validate this. No errors found. And if you go ahead and run your job. So for the first time, when you run an, or extract the data from an SAP table, uh, it will generate some ABAP code on your system, and uh, that is where it takes a little longer time. But second subsequent runs, it will be pretty fast. Now, since we are trying to extract a huge volume of data from SAP, uh, or more number of records, not like 800, 30, or 300, uh, you, we will be in a position to see what exactly happens in the monitor. So let this get activated. I can show you what exactly happens in the monitor. All right, now if you look at this, it is in the proceed state. This is, uh, you know, your interview question and certification question as well. Initially, it is in the proceed state. Uh, it will start picking up the records. It will be first in the ready, and then it will be in proceed. When it is in proceed, it will start picking up the records. And once it is done, it will go to stop. Right, so this is stop. So exact time that is taken for 16,925 records is 1.2 seconds. And the total time is uh, one minute for the job because we are trying to do it for the first time and it is trying to extract, uh, create some backcode code in the back end. Now, if you go to your data flow and you check 
this magnifying glass, click on that, go to the profile tab to validate if we get uh, got all those records. 16,925 records. You want to validate how many records are there in your source. There will be more because we applied a filter. And you can actually, you know, go and apply uh, a runtime filter even without running the job. You want to validate the data and cross-check if a particular value is correct. Uh, okay, some connection issues. But yeah, so if you want to validate your data and make sure that LVORM we gave is not equal to X, but if you want to cross-check that one, if it has some X in it, so you can select that one and you just go, go for the filters, click on the drop-down, and go for the column LVORM, give the operator, you can select contains between, uh, right, begins with is, is not null, is null. When it is is, by default the system will take null. And is equal to x. The condition which I gave is is not equal to x. So let me check if it is equal to x. And do I have any data on that one? No, I have zero records. Right, you can go and validate and you want to kill the filter, you can click on this button, refresh it and you'll see the data or you can click on this one, the LVORM column, click on a cell, right click and say add LVORM is equal to this one is equal to null and you say is not equal to null, apply Right, so null is never equal to null, so you you'll, you cannot validate on that condition. But yeah, you can go ahead and apply the filter on some value and cross check if it is there. You can do that. So this is how we can uh, go ahead and val do a quick validation even before we call the data owners and say that hey, your data is loaded in the table. Uh, even before you do that, you can do go and do a quick validation on the data from the data services side. So the, for this, you don't need to have a you know, log on credential required for your database table. You can just go ahead and validate that from your data services side as well. The second thing, so any questions on extracting the data from SAP table to a database table? Okay. <coughs> yeah, Chandra, go ahead. Yeah, can we extract the uh, extractors from ECC to DDS? Yeah, to LIS underscore. See, that is, yeah. that is yeah, the, the basic reason why we do that is, uh, you know, these extractors are, uh, you know, a view kind of a structures that are built on uh, the SAP systems where you say that you pick few columns from this table, few yeah. columns from this table, this is the join relation. So, you know, sometimes when you are exactly looking for that data set, and you don't want to apply the similar joins on this uh, on the data services side. You can go and directly get the extractors. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Adil, you have a question. Uh, do we have to be familiar with the SAP system uh, f to do these transformations? No, not uh, required like because the T codes SAP and all that. No, not not really required, Adil, because SAP is just one of your source, right? So in, in some projects, you, you might work with SAP. In some projects, you might not work with SAP. Uh, you might, uh, you know, work with uh, flat files or databases or SAP HANA as well. So generally, when we talk about an SAP source, there will be help for us, right? From so SAP standpoint, there will be a functional guy who will be supporting us in understanding which tables we need to extract and all these things. And these data stores will be created by the administrators. And as a developer, we will just go and look at our mapping sheet and see what are the tables that we have in the list. So just go and search and import them into data services and start mapping it. So this is what we generally do. Uh, but, you know, just to have a bigger picture, because this is a very small tool and, uh, you know, I just don't want to uh, say something and hide something. So I'm just going with each and every step, both the admin developers and the testers rule and how do you validate the data and all these things we are trying to cover uh, as a part of this training because this is a very small tool, right? It is not huge as SAP and uh, Oracle or SAP BW. It's a very small tool, so I'm trying to cover up everything. But it is not mandatory for us to know SAP, but it is always good if you know, you know, database, back-end database, some DML statements like select star from, because once we load that into the back-end staging and you want to do a quick query on the data and uh, you want to validate that, 
you can go and write a quick query on the backend database. So there is a PDF called uh, Dummies for SQL. You can just download SQL for Dummies or Dummies for SQL. I think it is SQL for Dummies. If I'm not wrong, you can just download that and uh, learn quick fundamentals on database side. And uh, yeah, that that will more help because I I can also share one good experience that uh, when I was in Bangalore I went for an interview and uh, the person who is taking my interview is an Oracle expert and he knows zero about data services he has no idea what data services is other than uh, you know he understands that it is an ETL tool and he is an expert on Oracle and he knows how to write routines start uh, not routines but you call them as store procedures in Oracle so he knows in and out of Oracle. He can he can just give him a system and he can do everything. Now he is trying to understand how can I do that on data services. So he asked me this question, right? I want to go to a table and see this material number and it and a combination of this plant value and a combination of all these things and he is uh, asking me how can I do that using data services. So initially I tried to explain on the board saying that I had to I was trying trying to talk in his terms, saying that this is something like a self statement from this 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 table. But again, I got lost because, and I'm not <coughs> sorry. I'm totally from an SAP background, and you know, to tell frankly, I learned database once I came into uh, data services, and uh, I started writing store procedures and all these things from the last year. Right before that, and I have no idea what is Oracle, how to log into Oracle, and how to see see those tables and all these things. Right, so I, I started explaining him. I got lost, and then I told him, uh, "Can I talk on uh, data services standpoint?" And I just told him that you need to click on the magnifying glass, go and select whatever the column that you want, apply filter, and you want an additional filter, you can go ahead and add one more. Uh, column and apply a filter and you want to do an end condition or an or condition you can go and switch between the conditions here and you can go and run your job just refresh it and uh, you know you'll see the data then that guy is really impressed because on Oracle side you have to write a code which has to be syntax uh, syntax correct and all these things but on data services side just by navigating through very simple steps you can go ahead and uh, you know display whatever the data that you are looking for or you can just validate whatever you have done is correct or not right that is one good advantage and uh, you know that guy is really impressed because data services is a, an effortless tool which will show us the instant results and it has its drawbacks but you know that that not that major that we can talk about them right now but we will cover the do's and don'ts of data services and uh, you know what scenario you have to go for what because sometimes it it can cause you a big pain and sometimes it is now you need to know how to use this tool uh, to make it more efficient rather than just knowing the fundamentals of this tool and trying to incorporate that on the system we need to know how good we can use this tool right so any questions any more questions sorry I just went ahead is there a scenario where none of the filters work then we can write uh, sorry there is a question is there a scenario where none of the filters work then we can write the code uh, see uh, Anita this is the case right so if you want to apply any filters on the data you can use a query transformation and you want to apply all the filters here right and uh, if you want to write a code uh, you are talking about an SAP ABAP code or I did not get what you are asking for or on the database side because if it is on SAP we don't have any area where we can go and write a code here but if it is on the database side we have a transformation called SQL so we can write all the entire SQL code in this transformation and uh, you know we can just execute that yeah we can write those scripts on the SQL transformation and execute that so that it will just do a push down and get only the result required result not to the data services side. We'll get to that one. Yeah, that's a good question, Anita. All right, yeah. Now, the second thing that we'll be looking at is how do we create a structured flat file? Till now, we created an unstructured flat file. Now, we will see how to create a structured flat file. And this is 
very important when you're trying to validate the data and you don't have an access to your database and you want to you know apply some filters on the data and look at it or uh, you know you want to create a flat file as an output from your data services and that should be a structured flat file so that the LSMW guys can read it right so open your query transformation when if you want to create a structured flat file you need a query transformation and go to the schema out select the name of the query transformation do a context menu right click and go and create a file format all right so this will take you to the same screen but here you can see the structure so this is a structured flat file mmff underscore mara underscore trgt now just select the name write it into your outbound directory give the name as dot uh, txt and you want to keep it as a pipeline delimited file then since this is your target file I want to write the row headers as yes and you want to do some changes on the names you can do it here as well click on save and close now your target flat file is created go to your formats tab and this is my target open that one I read that one and now you see a structured file this is not an unstructured this is structured and the important thing is it will tell you how many times this file is used right so select this and uh, drag it into your data flow make it as your target and once you save it will show you the usage connect it with your query transformation validate to see if there are any errors no errors form this is save all button save it now you see the usage is one and like in SAP we can also navigate like view where used if you are looking at a table and you know this table is created by one data flow this is used as a source in multiple data flows so you want to see where exactly all these things that is used you can select that object right click and say view where used right the same is case with the data stores or sorry tables data flows so if you are using this same data flow in multiple jobs you can see this one now this file which I selected earlier this is used as a source in this and in this data flow you want to double check that double click on that one and it will take you to the customer source flat file All right so view where used list is one of the important thing when you are actually uh, you know tracking down your objects now I created a flat file connected that to the query transformation now you go ahead and run your job and hopefully this should run a bit faster than what it is uh, what it has taken last time I guess it is 61 seconds last time then this should be a bit faster than that at the same time data services can load the data into two different targets one is your database table and the second one is your flat file Okay, it's taking pretty much the same time. All right, so it took a little longer than the last time. Sorry for that. It should not actually. Now it created a flat file, and if you go to your desktop in your outbound directory, it'll have this. Mara target 
open that and it's a pipe delimited file if you want to check it properly Oops, sorry go to Excel paste that one so it generally gets posted into a single column because it is a pipe delimited file. The second column has no data. It's only into the first column now. You go to the data tab in your Excel and uh, you see this text to columns. Convert this, select this, and this is a delimited file. Select yes. Next. It's not a tab delimiter, but it is a pipeline delimiter. And click on finish. And now this data is posted properly. Right, the preceding zeros are gone. If you want to have them, then what you can do is if you want to have the preceding zeros, just make sure this is one of the smallest mistakes that we generally do. And uh, pipe delimiter and uh, just go for next and make sure that you select text here and click on finish. The preceding zeros will be there. All right. So, you can have the exact format of the data. Uh, so generally we do this mistake when we are trying to save the data into an Excel and uh, that's end up losing all the preceding zeros and stuff. But this is how we write the data from an SAP table to a database table and a flat file simultaneously. And this is how we go ahead and create a structured flat file using data services. So any questions on uh, today's topics that we discussed? One is creating an SAP data store searching for the table and identifying your SAP table, loading the data, applying a column level filter and a row level filter using your query transformation. And we'll talk in detail about the query transformation because uh, I'm, I'm just telling you that this query transformation will take one entire session. So that much we can do using a query transformation. So uh, we'll cover that a little later, but as of now, to understand the fundamentals to apply a column level filter and a row level filter we use a query transformation and using the same query transformation we created a structured flat file All right so this is how we load the data into a database and a flat file simultaneously using data services so any questions into those topics <coughs> Okay, uh, yep. Yeah. Vandana, is that clear to you? Yeah, that is clear actually. Is there any like uh, in the period of something we can go through some exercises and practice this in different uh, scenarios? Oh, I don't have any exercises as such, but you know, as of now, we check with Mara table. You can go and check with Mar C, Mar D, and so on. Multiple tables are there on SAP. You can go ahead and check with multiple tables. Okay. So like uh, using those adventure works and... Uh, other yeah, those are the database tables because, you know, database is something that we need to go and create and utilize, but SAP you have the predefined tables and you have those data present in those tables, so you can directly use them. There's no need for us to download any content on the SAP tables because it is already there. Okay. Okay, all right. thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, sorry, how can we apply a row level filter? So, uh, you know, row level filter is nothing but, uh, you know, where condition, Chandra. Uh, so, where uh, material number is equal to, uh, is not equal to 10, then you, you will exclude that record and get the remaining records or material number in, in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, you'll get only those six records. Right, where plant number is equal to 1000, you get the data only for those. So this is a where condition that we apply to uh, go ahead and apply a row level filter. Is that clear, Chandra? Column level filter is something on the right hand side, so probably you uh, 
you don't need all the columns from the source you just need only few columns so you can select them and drag them to the right hand side so that is your column level filter yeah right drag and drop and uh, two days off as per the week so that uh, we can practice and you know as we practice just trust me uh, you know I've been doing this tool from you know working on this tool from so many years uh, I can just make sure that there will be no errors when I'm doing it right but when you practice on the system right you might get confused there are so many possibilities that you know, instead of dragging one thing you drag another thing or uh, you get into an error so that is where you get a question so right practice each and everything just like school days practice at 10 times 20 times with the same table it really doesn't matter but uh, the main advantage of your practice is that you know these things will stick in your mind right the layout of the screen, what are the different options, where you have them, but just in case if I by mistake, if I skip some, uh, if I skip something and you identify that when you are practicing, then you can go ahead and practice that. Uh, so Monday, uh, Chandra, we don't have a class on Monday morning, 6.30 a.m. IST, which will be your Tuesday morning, 6.30 a.m. Oh. IST. So every week, four days, not five days. No, it is... Uh, Sorry, is today Thursday? I'm really today sorry. Friday. Tomorrow we have a class. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> that, what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Yeah, tomorrow we have a class. And uh, so to put it on the standard terms, US Saturday and Sunday we don't have a class and Indian uh, yes. Sunday and Sunday, Monday we Monday. don't have a class. Yeah. Indian Sunday, Monday. India Sunday and Monday and US uh, Saturday and Sunday we don't have a class. Yes, yes, yes. So okay. 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 Thanks. But thanks, man. Thanks for the correction. I was uh, full in the weekend mood, so I'm just waiting for the weekend to pop up. So a long day <laughs> work. So I'm just waiting for it. Thank okay. you. Yeah, Thank we you. have a session tomorrow, and tomorrow we'll be looking at conditional scripts and global variables. Uh, that is uh, one of the most important thing that will help us to you know understand if you know these conditions scripts and global variables and you go into any data services project and have a look at the project you will really understand how these projects are built right so this is the foundation for us to understand the project work the real-time work and everything everything is built on these formulas or these baselines so I look at that and once we are done with this we'll go to the single user instance and multi user instance this is again an administrator session there's an end to end admin topic so we'll look into that uh, and we'll try to understand how you work on a small projects how you work on big projects too all right so till then take care have a good time and uh, see you in the next session bye thank for now. you bye